In our next lesson on metabolism and bioenergetics from chapter 12, we want to consider the general role of vitamins in metabolism and also to consider the complexity of metabolism as it occurs within the cell. At the same time, we'll gain a broad overview of the metabolic pathways we'll consider in greater detail later. Vitamins is short for vital amines. They're vital or essential because they're required in small amounts for normal human health. Many of them serve as cofactors for the enzymes in these metabolic pathways. They're also essential because for most of them we can't synthesize them. They have to be supplied in the diet. As it turns out, most of them really aren't amines, but the name is general and it has stuck. So I have an example of two at the bottom, ascorbic acid on the right, vitamin C. As you can see, there's no amine group there. And yet thiamine on the right, vitamin D1, it does have amine groups, and so the name is appropriate in that case. You don't need to know the individual vitamins and their roles, just their relative significance. Metabolic pathways are all more or less connected. It's like a complex integrated circuit within the cell. The substrates in one pathway are the products of another, and many times the intermediates of these pathways feed into multiple other pathways. And for this reason, pathway activity is highly regulated. The cell regulates the flow of metabolites between these pathways. It will shut down some pathways and turn others on in response to different stimuli. It's also important to recognize that not every cell uses every pathway. Each cell has an, its own metabolic toolbox. Some are catabolic, some are anabolic, and some feed into both types of pathways. In this overview of metabolism, we start at the top with our biopolymers, and remember in digestion we broke those down to the monomeric form. These monomers are then converted to intermediates of two and three carbon compounds. These carbons are then fully oxidized to CO2, and in this process we're going to extract electrons and we're going to pass those to temporary electron carriers and then those get recycled through electron loss in this process of oxidative phosphorylation pictured at the bottom of the screen here and in this process we're going to produce both water and ATP so this is an overview of actually several chapters here, 13, 14, and 15. In our next video lesson, we want to consider the factors that determine the free energy change of an enzymatic reaction. We also want to see if there is a way that we can make a reaction that is thermodynamically unfavorable actually occur within the cell.